Hi, this is Graham at Contender Bicycles in Salt Lake City and Park City, Utah. Today we're going to do a short video on how to unbox and assemble the bike that you just received from us. All of our bikes have been assembled and test ridden previous to being boxed and shipped to you, so they really only need some minor assembly to get ready for the road. You can do this assembly without a stand. Just remember that if you have to lay the bike down on its side uh, to make things easier for you, just remember to lay it with the drive side up. In order to get this bike assembled, you will need a four millimeter and a five millimeter Allen wrench. You'll need an eight millimeter Allen wrench and a pedal wrench. We also recommend using a torque wrench when dealing with carbon frames or parts. You'll also want some grease and assembly compound. It's also a good idea to have some diagonal cutters or really sturdy scissors to be able to cut some zip ties. The one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do when you've received your bike is to inspect the box for any damage and take photos of it so that you can contact us about it later. When you go to open the box, be sure to cut just along the tape line, being careful not to cut into the box so that you won't damage tires, tubes, or any other components that might be uh, near the edge of the box. So go ahead and open the box. Then the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take out, there will be a little accessories box, which will have any accessories the frame should have come with as well as any accessories you ordered at the time of purchase, bottle cages, pedals, stuff like that. The next thing in the, in the box will be a black folder that will have some paperwork in it that, sh that should get read through. It'll also have an assembly checklist to help, assembling, to help you assemble the bike step by step. There'll also be a sticker and a contact card. The next step is to pull the bike from the box. All you're gonna need to do is to reach in, grab the bike, pull it out of the box, and set it on the ground. Now that you've gotten the bike out of the box, the next thing to do is to find your saddle and seat post, remove it, and insert it into the seat tube. If you have a DI2 equipped bike, there may be an E-tube wire sticking out of your seat tube. You'll just wanna be sure that before you stick the seat post in, you attach it to the battery in the seat post, Press firmly, you'll hear a click when the connection's made, and then insert it into the seat tube. If you've sent us fit measurements before we boxed your bike, we marked your saddle height with a piece of electrical tape. So when you insert your seat post, go down all the way down till that's flush with the top of the seat tube, and that'll be your saddle height. It's a good idea to put some assembly compound here on the seat post and in the seat tube install the seat post into the seat tube. Again, if you have an E-tube wire, please be sure if there's resistance installing the seat post into the seat tube that you don't force the seat post in, otherwise you may damage the E-tube wire, which will need replacement, and that's not um, something that's super easy to do. Get your seat collar tightened down, and then we're gonna throw it into a stand for the remainder of the assembly. Again, it doesn't need to be put in a stand, but if you're gonna lay the bike down on its side, be sure to lay it down with the drive side facing up. So now that you've got your seat post and saddle installed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the front wheel and the handlebars, and then lightly attach the handlebars to the stem. So you'll wanna take your diagonal cutters or your sturdy scissors and cut the zip ties that are holding the front wheel to the frame. Gently remove that off of the frame. It may be laced into the crank, so just be sure not to really, really wrestle it out and gently guide it out. You'll also wanna cut zip ties holding the handlebar to the stem. You'll need to loosen the bolts holding the faceplate to the stem. This will generally require a four millimeter Allen wrench. Remove any packaging from the handlebar. And be sure to save any of this, any of this packaging in case you ever travel with your bike, it's convenient to have then, or for whatever reason you might need to send the bike back to us. Be sure as you install the faceplate and 
put the bar into the stem um, that you're not damaging any of the wires or cables and housing, getting them pinched in between the bar and the stem or in between the faceplate and the handlebar. So just get the faceplate installed um, with the bolts tightened down just enough to hold the handlebar in place while you complete the rest of the work on your bike. The next step would be to get the front wheel installed. Go ahead and remove your axle. And then remove the pad spacer in your disc brake caliper if you have one. Be careful not to remove the wheel dust caps. Just push them back in if they fall out. Install the wheel with the rotor positioned between uh, the pads and the caliper. Install the axle. Tighten the axle back down. Give the brake a couple squeezes. Spin the wheel, make sure the brake doesn't rub. So now that you've got your front wheel installed, it's a good time to check your brake function and run through your shifting just to make sure nothing shifted or got damaged during shipping. So just click through each of the cogs on your cassette, making sure that the chain lands nice and calm and quietly in each cog and that there's not any odd drivetrain noises. Also listen for any brake rub and give your brakes a nice firm squeeze to make sure that they have adequate power. So once you've confirmed that your brakes and shifting are working well, I would recommend taking the bike and finalizing the position of the handlebars. Put the bike on the ground with the stem bolt still a little bit loose. Position the handlebar where you'd like it. Take a torque wrench and tighten the stem down to the manufacturer's recommended torque settings. Depending on the stem, you may need to, you, you're gonna either want to tighten the bolts in a X pattern, or if you have an Easton stem, you want the top two bolt, bolts tightened and torqued first, and then tighten and torque the bottom two bolts. While you've got the torque wrench out, I would also recommend torquing your stem. Steer two bolts down. as well as your seat post seat collar. Now that you've got your cockpit and seat post torqued down, the last couple of things to do are check your tire pressure and suspension sag, install any, any accessories that you got, bottle cages, saddle bags, or pedals. Remember that pedals are left and right side specific. They will both tighten toward the front of the bike and be sure to use grease on the threads of the pedals. If your bike has DI2, ETAP, or is an e-bike, please be sure to top off the batteries before you go on your first ride. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions about assembling your bike, please call us at 801-364-0344 or send us an email to info at contenderbicycles.com. Please be sure to check out our website for more info about the products we carry and the services we provide. Oh,